Like its predecessor, the GF3, the Panasonic Lumix DMC GF5 remains among my favorite choices for snap shooters who are looking for a faster, better camera, but one that's similar enough to a point and shoot, or a phone, that they're not forced out of their comfort zone. While the body's compact, sturdily constructed, and very similar to the GF3, Panasonic has added a few physical controls that had disappeared from that model. But the most important physical change over the GF3 is the new grip. The GF3's was very slippery, and this larger rubberized grip is a huge improvement, especially if you need to shoot one-handed. The camera keeps the direct access intelligent auto button that Panasonic wisely puts on top of all of its models. My only wish is that when you pressed it, it didn't override your autofocus settings. The camera operates much like a point and shoot, albeit with more sophisticated options, such as the ability to fully customize the quick menu interface. To go with the new higher resolution LCD, Panasonic redesigned the look of the touchscreen interface, and it's a lot more attractive than before. It also incorporates the flyout tab that debuted in the GX1, as well as interface hints. The new touchscreen is very nicely responsive. As with the GF3, you can tilt the flash backwards to produce more attractive flash exposures as well. The power zoom kit lens is convenient, and it collapses to make a very compact package. But it's a so-so lens, and reaching that zoom switch is annoyingly awkward. The GF5's feature set is pretty standard for its class, though it is one of the few models that still has a built-in flash. And if you're a touchscreen addict, you'll probably consider the ability to operate the power zoom lens via the screen a very nice feature. It also has a full complement of configurable special effects, and it saves a raw file simultaneously when you use them. Though it's the same resolution as the GF3, the GF5 incorporates a new version of the 12 megapixel sensor and an updated version of its image processing engine. There's some improvement in the noise profile and JPEG processing over the GF3, especially at low ISO sensitivities. That seems partly because the image coming off the sensor looks less noisy, an expected advancement from one generation to the next. Overall, though, the colors look very nice, and the default settings push saturation and contrast gently enough that there's no discernible hue shift. And while it has a reasonable dynamic range, you do lose some detail in shadow areas that can't be recovered without introducing color noise. None of this is unusual in the price class, though. Metering and exposure is generally on target, and JPEG photos look slightly oversharpened, but not crunchy. And finally, the video quality is fine for typical consumer use. You know, vacation clips, cat antics, and kitty goal scoring. The full-time autofocus pulses a bit, but works well enough. While the GF3 is fast, the GF5 is faster. Most important from a performance perspective, though, the camera never slows you down while you're shooting, a problem which I've encountered with some of the higher resolution models. Shooting RAW plus JPEG feels fast and fluid, and I never had to wait for the camera to finish writing an image file before I could review a shot or change settings. And the LCD is sufficiently visible in direct sunlight, which is essential since the camera doesn't support an add-on viewfinder. I think the Sony Alpha NEX F3 has somewhat better photo quality overall, and that one has a tilting LCD. But otherwise, I like the design and interface of the GF5 better. I'm Lori Grunin, and this is the Panasonic Lumix DMC GF5.